you guys often call us fighters. I'm just surviving. I mean, what other choice do I have? But you guys all have a choice, and you choose to be there. Not a few times a year. It, every single day. My name is Erica Griffiths, and I have stage four metastatic breast cancer. I am a uh, mother. I am a daughter. I am a partner. I am a marketing operations manager, <laughs> um, a friend. I had gone to a, uh, my OBGYN and then um, I had to go see a breast surgeon and she felt strongly enough that I needed to get uh, three core biopsies that same day. And then the very next day I got the news that it was um, indeed breast cancer. And then after the CT scan and the bone scan, it was shown that it had spread to my liver and my spine and my, no, at that point it was just my liver and my spine. And so that made it stage four, which is completely 100% incurable. Um, so when you're early stage, um, they want to hit it hard. They want to hit it, they want to kill it, they want to give you the best chance at um, no recurrence. When you're stage four, you all, you're always going to be in treatment. So you want to keep your body as strong as possible. So I did four rounds of hard chemo, four different drugs. There's two drugs that I continue to get, uh, Herceptin and Progetta, and those treat the HER2. Tamoxifen, which is just a daily pill that gave me joint pain and hot flashes and all that good stuff. I had my ovaries out. Awesome. <laughs> so that's instant menopause at 39. That was super. And the average lifespan of someone in my position is 33 months. I have a three-year-old. I'm terrified. I mean, no one can raise my daughter like I can. Paranoia, a lot of paranoia. Is it going to come back? I know it's going to come back. When is it going to come back? Is it going to come back next year, five years from now? It's almost like an hourglass with the sand dropping good because you know it's going to happen. So I kind of had this rush of support and once I got through that first round of chemo I realized very quickly that I needed it. You can't do this alone. Oh Joe, <laughs> I feel so bad for him. We, you know, we dated years ago and both got married separately um, and about 10 years after that got back together. We were very slow to you know buy the house and have the baby and we did all of those things and then this happens and it's it's just like really? <laughs> and he, he you know he's taking it really hard this is hard but he's he's doing a great job he's thinking ahead which is why he's pushing so hard with his work and with school to ensure that, you know, we're in a position that Isabel's basically, you know, in the best place possible. So I have a three-year-old daughter, Isabel, and she is um, the light of my life. She is uh, very spunky. My mom swears that we're like twins. Um, she's in preschool and she's very social and very happy and drives me insane. <laughs> you know, she's my inspiration, obviously, every day. It's, it's, it's heartbreaking to be in my position. I can't imagine not being here for her. I mean, I, what can I say? Metastatic breast cancer is like, you know, we live in the shadows. We're your worst nightmare. You know, there's, it's kind of the forgotten part of breast cancer. It's not pink and pretty and warrior and etc. So I, I, I like when people are brave enough to ask me, I don't understand, what does that mean? And then I can educate a little bit. Metaviver is an organization based out of Maryland, uh, totally grass, grassroots, uh, ran by metastatic breast cancer patients like myself. Their goal is to get research dollars to the right hands to, um, because right now only about 2 to 7 percent of breast cancer research money goes to um, studying metastasis which is crazy. <laughs> that makes no sense at all. Um, and as a result, 113 
women and a few men are dying every single day. Having hope to me is the possibility of beating the odds, even if it's beating it a little bit, I'll take it. <laughs> um, it's giving, you know, Isabel the, the chance to have a mother, you know, that she remembers. Um, and that we can turn a terminal disease into um, a chronic disease that can be treated. I'll be happy to get an infusion every week if you want for the next 20 years. I'll get it in my forehead. I don't care. Just keep me around. There's two major sides to, to cancer. There's, there's the research part and that's why I, I, I focus on that so much. And then there's the other side, the emotional support and the financial support. Heather Hogue is, uh, is the person who introduced me to Team CMMD. I think she was fundraising for Broad Street, which I had, I've run multiple times prior to cancer. Um, you know, and there's so many organizations out there. I was like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> and then um, little did I know what kind of group she was uh, a part of. And, um, but I sure did find out. <laughs> we did a dedication run in my name. I showed up bold. Um, and Joe ran, I think I pushed uh, Isabel in the stroller, and it was just very, really moving. Just, I could, I could tell that this group of people were like me, like this deep down inside. In addition to the dedication run, she nominated me for financial assistance, um, and that was huge for me. You know, deductibles and, you know, all these crazy, uh, I didn't even know what it all meant. I didn't know how this was going to affect me financially. Um, I had childcare, I had all these you know, regular bills. I had people flying in and staying with me. My water bill for October <laughs> was like three times as much. And just getting that check and knowing that I didn't have paperwork to fill out and W-2s to provide, like, because all I've been doing is filling out forms and answering questions, just this, here you go. No strings attached, thank you very much, meant the world to me. Team CMMD has been there in every way possible that I can think of from the very beginning. And what I, what moves me, I think, are things like Jim dedicating a run to me and we're like years out. So you guys, I feel, get it. Like a lot of people, some people, We'll look at a cancer fight and there's like this beginning and then there's this, you know, in between and then this beautiful end and that's not the case for me. And I don't feel like you guys have given up on me, like your, your family.